Welcome to part two. Had to split the video because of YouTube's 10 minute rule on length. One thing you'll notice over here now is that red LED. That means that I have the power supply turned on still because I like to live dangerously. It takes a little while to bleed down if I can find the switch. There it is. And you can see the, uh, the battery over here, a little watch battery type thing. It keeps your memory information. So let's sweep over to the side that we're interested in. First thing I'll do is we're looking in this area right here. And I want to pull this connector off because it's in the way. You start soldering, you don't want to burn it up. So I usually do this and fold it out of the way. Let me now remember this is the front of the radio and it's upside down. As we move in. I just take this cable and stick it between this piece of metal. Okay, We're in this area. It's a tiny little area. It's bracketed by a bunch of these little shields. The first transistor is like right in here and the other one is right here. And here's some detail for you so you can see exactly which transistor is which and where they are on the board. But anyway, that's, that's uh, the area we'll be working in. Now let me show you the mod I did. That's the other thing that's kind of interesting here. You can see where I scorched the relays. You got to be real careful. There is not much room in here. There's probably, oh, I don't know, maybe four to five millimeters between these two relays. And you can see where I scorched it a little here. But these are a diode limiter. One's forward bias, one's reverse bias. You hook them up so that they're in parallel with each other. Okay, so I straighten the leads on one diode and then I wrap the other diode's leads around the first diode. Notice how the bands are reversed. Once they're bent and clipped on the second diode, solder it in place, and then I trim the lead on one side, put an L-shaped bend in it, and that's what goes to the test point, and the other end goes to the nearest shield can. Um, I ground one side of the shield, and the other one, right in between these two relays, there's a little pad of solder down there, a little it looks like a little igloo, <laughs> a little dome, and you solder to that test point, which is test point 25, and that is the input to the IPO stage. Silicone diodes have an, uh, about seven tenths of a volt when they're reverse biased, so you will pass uh, no more than seven tenths of a volt of signal through that. It is possible that you could blow, you know, the diodes if you got too much RF into the thing. But I'd rather blow the diodes, I think, than the, the transistors. Hook this on the end of the tip and then push it down as a unit. It's a little hard to do when I'm trying to talk. And, and you push that thing down right onto your transistor where you want to remove the solder. That seems to work the best. Um, and that's why I put that little hook in the end of the, the solder wick. I look a little uncoordinated in the video because I have the camera right where ordinarily my head goes and then I have a illuminated magnifying glass over the entire work area. You don't see that in the video. I had to make some uh, changes so that you could record it on the video. Once the solder wick is, is saturated with solder, rem you know, clip the end off, bend another little L into it, do it again. Make sure you keep flux on there. I'll, I'll take my my paste flux, which is all yucky. I don't really want to put any on there, but I'll go in there and put a little dab of flux onto that areas where I need it on the transistor or where I want to heat it up. And then you go in there quickly and remove that solder as fast as you can. Once you've done a little bit, you know, I don't know, a second or two, you know, just enough. As soon as you see that solder flow and it's wicking up, don't wait too long. Once it starts flowing, you don't want to be on there more than, you know, a sec less than like half a second even. Just boom, get right out of there. Then if there's still too much solder on there, if you can't see the, what you want to see is the legs of the transistor clearly defined on top of the pad. You don't, you want nice sharp clean edges. You don't want to see any fillets where there's solder you know, between the legs, you know, coming down at an angle and filling it all in. You want to get as much of that off as you can, but do it a little at a time. So 
let's say you go in you remove some solder now there's still a little bit left it's not completely clean put more flux on the transistor the process of doing this is going to take time so it gives it more opportunity to cool down um, it should the paste should be able to stick to the transistor without actually melting and going away on you um, then go in again and just keep doing it until you finally get those pads clean um, the next thing I'll do is I'll go in and with the just the soldering iron and the you go in with just these two you've got your your tweezers and you get your soldering iron and you go for the the base leg of the transistor and you try with the with the tweezers I, I'm just kind of lifting and you don't necessarily need tweezers I'm just using the edge the point of it to lift the side with the that has just the one connection the base of the transistor I want to lift that just slightly off the pad so I know it's not soldered anymore then go to the other side and when you heat that up with the tip of the transistor or the uh, soldering iron you can push it like right off the pads just slide it over once it's off the pads it's usually loose and then you can pick it out of there with your tweezers and you're done then I go in put a little flux on the pads after everything's cool and um, just wipe them carefully with the tip of the iron so that the pads are nice and smooth and clean and there's no residual solder lumps and bumps in there when I go to put the new transistor in um, I put it on the board I put a little flux on each leg then I take some uh, I have some very fine solder and I'll use this I clean the tip of my side iron really good on the damp sponge and I try to put just a dot on the very tip of the iron the trouble is it keeps migrating onto the sides I don't like that so I'll wipe it off and I'm trying to get the the very tip of it to have just a little tiny bit of solder on it and I'll just touch that very carefully to that transistor one of the one of the connection leads either and and that once you've tacked down the transistor to where it's not going to move with the first solder joint then you're good because it's not going to move around the first time you do it it's kind of a hassle i actually i think sometimes would hold it with the tweezers hold the just press right on the body right on the center of it to hold it and then come in with the soldering iron and touch one leg and it will solder that down in there and that's kind of the quick view of I did the repair.